Good morning. Let's uh, start this morning with prayer. Father, we thank you for this book talk day as we cover Søren Kierkegaard's book. Not popular among too many people, but something that we must learn and must appreciate because he asked the right question because the answer to the wrong question is irrelevant. But Kierkegaard asked the right question. Hmm. What does it mean to be human, Lord, in Jesus' name? Wow. What does it mean to be human? Do you even ask that question? Uh, uh, Kierkegaard picks it up from Socrates. Socrates, uh, in his work, um, challenges people to think about who they are. Know thyself. Remember that? And so we kind of simply said, oh, yeah, he's that famous philosopher who went around Telling people, know thyself. Wow, if life is that easy. But what's the context in which the, uh, so uh, Socrates said, know thyself? Right? Is that he says, well, I know one thing that I know nothing. What does that mean? Right? It, in, in Greek, it means hodi hoti, hodi auden. And then he will say, well, at least I know one thing that I know nothing. So, what about you? Know thyself. Gnoti sauton. Gnoti sauton. Gnosis actually in Greek means to intimate relationship, knowledge. So it's like Adam knew Eve and they had a baby. So when Jesus said, I do not know you, Gnosis, I have no relationship with you. It's that it's not like, of course, Jesus knows us. He numbered our hair. But he said, I have no relationship with you. That's where we use the term gnosis. Well, Socrates also used gnoti sauton. Know yourself intimately. Do you know who you are? Or do you focus on the stuff, the per peripheral, the outside stuff? When you learn, you know, after reading this book, of course, it's in Korean, but it's Kierkegaard's book. Learn from the lily of the field, and bird in the air, or the three uh, discourse. It talks about how, how do we become a human? Through silence, through obedience, through happiness or joy. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant book that Kierkegaard wrote uh, when 19, uh, 1849, May 5th. 1849, May 5th, he wrote this book. Um, and he gives this book to that individual. He writes that, I pray that this book um, without authority um, it was published in 1997 through Princeton Howard and Howard by Edna Howard Hong and Edna Hong's book. So in Kierkegaard, without authority. So what we are doing at Kierkegaard Research Center in Korea is to actually break down Kierkegaard's book into many, many different books because it's very complex. And Kierkegaard, in order to understand his book, you need to go back and read, for example, this book was published 1849, May 5th, that you must go back to his diary of 1849, May. And because he will write in the diary why he wrote the book that way. This is kind of crazy how he, Kierkegaard, was certain that someday everybody will translate everything that he wrote and have to cross-reference and study it together. Wow. And so he leaves us with all the diary intact so that uh, Edna and Howard and Edna Holm actually translate everything that Kierkegaard ever wrote in Danish to English. And entire thing said is in Kierkegaard Library in St. Olaf right now. So this is good. So Kierkegaard knew that, yes, someday my diary will be translated and it will be cross-referenced to the book that I'll be publishing. The key concept of this book is that how do you become a human? Well, learn from the bird. Learn from the lily of the field. 
they do three things. They are silent before God, they obey God, and they unconditionally experience joy without competing, comparing, even if they knew that they will be just the flower, lily of the valley, no one will be look, looking and no one, but it just beautifully shine before God. Wow, what a picture. So becoming um, the irony of existence, if a tree falls in the silent forest and nobody heard, did it fall? So, you know, the whole, whole you know, that so exist, existential question. Kierkegaard wrote this book, and the brilliant part of this book that is you cannot find anywhere else in the world is that Reverend Yi chang wrote a commentary on this particular book, comparing it with this book, much thicker discourse on uh, suffer. This is part C, six, this is part seven, and you should read it together. I already did a book talk on this, the gospel according to suffering, right? So in this book talks about how through suffering, we find true joy. Um, if the suffering is heavy, our joy will be light. Um, through the, the school of suffering that we receive the education of eternal happiness, on and on and on and on and on, right? And um, so with this text, I did a book talk on this already, so you could go back and, and listen to this. So this, it talks about difference between the suffering, the joy come from the suffering of taking the cross versus joy of learning from the birds and the field, the flower, lily of the field. What's the difference? Through the joy of suffering of the cross, we become Christian. Through the suffering and learning from the birds and the, the lily of the field, we become a human. Two radically different things. Only Christian can learn how to become Christian through the suffering of the gospel. Not through. So as the, uh, the teacher is the lily flower and the bird in this book, the teacher in this book is Jesus Christ. Through following Christ, we become Christian. Learning from them, you become a human. <laughs> so, and the whole irony of Socrates is mentioned. And he says, wow, this is fantastic. You know, he says, Socrates um, challenged people. And he makes a commit, uh, the, uh, the comment that through deception, through through all these ruckus, this is busy being business and noisy and 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 people focusing their life on value out of themselves, they waste their life. And that's how the world. I mean, 500 BC before Jesus was born, Socrates was already pointing out that many people, most people, don't even understand who they are. They exist based on people's opinion. And people's idea what happiness is, you don't even know what happiness is for you. You're just thinking that, well, if I have died with a lot more toys and live more, eat fancier food and go to more expensive vacation package, then I guess I'm happy. I should be happy, right? Are you? Right? Um, and then Kierkegaard writes in his diary, in his NB or note, so there he had a, a diary and then he had NB, which means take a good note. That's what it means in Latin, NB. So NB 35, two, okay, page number 189. This is amazing. He writes, you cannot become Christian by being born in Christian nation. He says, no, one cannot be Christian by at birth, no. And becoming a Christian by one confession. This is ridiculous, obnoxious statements. So Kierkegaard criticized the theology of the time, popular theology of the time, that, oh, we are born Christian because we're Danish. Well, King said so. Well, King could say whatever he wants, but he's saying, well, that's not true. And, and well, just like Billy Graham's theology there, well, you confess it, blab it, and man, you're saved. Now you're going to see in kingdom of God. 
No, he's saying that one confession is not going to make you Christian. Kierkegaard said that already 168 years ago. Isn't that amazing? And, and I'm usually soft landing that comment by saying that, eh, well, 99% of the people who believe in Jesus through Billy Graham doesn't go to church. Are they saved? I, I sort of try to say it nicely. But Kierkegaard says, hell no. You know, that's absurd. <laughs> that's stupid, he says. Cannot become Christian that way. Um, Kierkegaard says, go tea, Sultan, naughty. Naughty Sultan, know thyself. Right. Why? He writes that between, he said, Kierkegaard writes that we should all become like bird and learn. But he knows. It's an ironic statement that we he knew that he cannot be a bird. So there's a contradiction. The contradiction, irony of existence. And Kierkegaard basically admits that I cannot understand gospel because a lie between gospel and me, there is a limitation of language. That's where Wittgenstein comes in. It, it, it study it. When we talked about what is truth, Wittgenstein basically said, well, we cannot communicate truth because the language is a limitation, right? I gave up birth to different idea, like symbolic language and all kinds of stuff. But uh, Kierkegaard already started it, you know, before Wittgenstein said, well, the limitation of the language keeps us from truly understanding what gospel is and try to understand gospel through understanding is oxymoron as well. And then that gospel is trying to kill me. So he talks about die to self in order to understand the gospel because gospel cannot be understood. Wow. Kierkegaard actually gave a birth to Heidegger idea. Heidegger talks about what is existence? Well, we're kind of thrown in this. We're thrown into existence and then calls Dasein. Here I am. But am I here? So apostrophe and also question mark. So Heidegger believed in based on Kierkegaard's tradition, like, yeah, we cannot really know our existence. We're kind of thrown into existence. We're still questioning. And then Heidegger later in his life, actually I saw this in a uh, in a video format, they convert the edit, you know this the uh, you know cheesy film thing into video set, and he, uh, Heidegger later just kind of goes to in and out of um, mental hospital, but he says that the only language the philosopher should use is the poets. The poetry is the only way we're going to communicate, and that actually really comes out from Kierkegaard's writing as well. Kierkegaard, as a poet, he writes and he tries to communicate indirectly. He doesn't make direct statement about anything. No, he makes an indirect statement using poetry. And in order to understand that, you need to read his diary. Wow, that's just complicated. <laughs> First of all, when we, um, through birds and the lily, we learn to exist as a spirit or as a person and primarily comes through meditation, silence. Silence is the ultimate form of prayer. And he's saying that through silence, we learn to be a human, learn to be, to communicate with God and through complete obedience. And through complete obedience, you also learn complete joy. To have joy, beyond just because it's nice things that are happening to me. No, unconditional joy is what we must learn. Only through the through suffering of Christ, the joy is learned and then we become a Christian. So this book uh, talks about three main things about what we need to learn. Meditation, silence, obedience, Enjoy through the lily of the field and birds in the air. Three discourse. I hope uh, you have chance to read Kierkegaard, but actually knowing that uh, when you read, it will make more sense. Like ah, that's what that's what he was talking about. <laughs> Amen. Lord bless you. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.